praise God for his mercy. Praise God for his love. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah to the One who is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah to our Shepherd. Good Shepherd. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your love for your people. It is an everlasting love. Love that knows no bounds. Love that is everlasting. Mercies that are new every morning. We praise you and we worship you. We adore you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we have the liberty to hear your word and do it. Holy Spirit, we thank you. And we are also grateful to you that we are under no obligation to the flesh. We don't have to give in to the flesh. We don't have to live a life of flesh. We are obligated to the Spirit. We are under obligation to what you have accomplished on the cross. Or we thank you that you have come to dwell in our spirit. That is where he lives. I give you the glory, Lord, for this. Lord, we thank you that you paid such a high price to make us your home, your temple. You consider us worthy to be the vessels. We want to be vessel worthy of yourself. We want to be honorable vessel to the glory of God, not for our glory, but we will let you shape us, make us. Because in your house, there are all kinds of vessels. But Lord, we open our hearts today and we want to be vessels that will be yielded, submitted. Lord, we just want to be containers, containers of your presence. Your name will be glorified. So have your way with us, Lord, today. Speak to us, Lord, we pray. We're not looking for understanding only, Lord. We're looking for revelation. Speak to us, reveal to us things. Not only that we need to know, but Lord Jesus himself. We want the revelation of the Son of the living God. That's what our desire is. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise and glory be to Jesus. We can have a lot of understanding. We can understand many things. They won't do anything. Understanding of many things won't do anything. It is the revelation of Christ that will transform us. It is the revelation of Christ. And I tell you, my friend, he is willing to reveal himself to us. That's beautiful. For that he paid a great price. For that he gave his life. For that he was shamefully treated. For that, my friend, he was willing to go to this brutal death, shameful death, death on the cross. That is enough to cause me to love him above everything. Is it right? That is enough to give him the first priority. That is enough to tell him today, I belong to you. I'm yours, Lord. Have thy way with me. Let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done in my life, Lord. Dutch people, we had a very hard message last Sunday. And I told you that if it's not applicable to you, it was applicable to me. It was about obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Will I obey? Will I take time to listen to him? Will I do what he says? Will his will be done in my life? Jesus came to, is the only one who Fulfill the will of God. There was only one in the history. 
and his name is Jesus. We may reach it, and you, you can find it in Hebrew chapter 10, but he is the only one who did the will of God, and he is the only one who can do the will of God in us. I can't do the will of God, you can't do the will of God. None of the person in the world, doesn't matter how clean he considers him to be, they cannot do the will of God. The will of God is done only by one, his name is Jesus. And in relationship, as far as Christianity is concerned, it has to do with him living through us. I have seen the power of the outward kingdom. I've seen in men the power of the outward kingdom. They have lived very well. They have performed miracles. And I've also seen them flat on their face in sin. They could not conquer inside. Outwardly, they were conquering. Outwardly, they were impressive. They impressed people around them. But most of the time, it was building of the Tower of Babel. Are you with me? The best a man could do is to build the Tower of Babel. Are you with me? The best a man can do, a man of faith, is to produce Ishmael. What does it mean? Sarah had a responsibility. Sarah was given a responsibility. It was hard to cause her to be ready. It took about 26 or 25 years. Long before that time, 13 years before, even 25 years, she thought, I can give the responsibility to someone else. She limited God. Sarah limited God, and she thought, there can be another vessel. I don't have to be the vessel. It's too late for me. Oh, my friend, it's not too late. To the Lord, it's not too late. She looked at Hagar, strong girl. That is all right, I'll hand it over to her. Let her do my work. Let her bring the child for my husband. She loved him. Called him the Lord, did she not? She called him the Lord. And the Spirit of God tells us, you who are believer, call your husband the Lord. Have you not read it? Am I against the authority of women? No. The Spirit of God shows very clearly that there is not man, not woman, not Jew, not Gentile, not barbarian, not good man, the Greek. We all want. We all want. There is no distinction in spiritual spirituality. We're the same. God sees us one. But my friend, I'm simply saying she called Abraham Lord. She wanted to please her Lord. And the word of God says, ladies, you listen and do the same. He tells every Christian lady, do the same. Abraham's but we're not going to that. You can find out yourself in the letters. Read all the letters. They're small letters. You know, you'll find it. And if you can find it, let me know. If you remember it. I don't remember it by heart. If you do it, let me know. It's in Peter. One Peter, isn't it? What did Peter write about that and not the other? He had a wife. Peter had a wife. And he said, as Sarah called him Lord... You fear him. You fear your husband. What do you mean fear? Honor. It's not frightening fear. It is not a, a negative fear. It is the fear I honor him. I honor him. I'm submitted to him. As you have seen some of the ladies here covering their head. What does it mean? It means I acknowledge my husband as my Lord. Oh, that's why the, have you not were, have you written the have you not seen in the word very clearly it is written woman should cover her head because of the angels I'm not against those ladies who are not covered. doesn't matter 
It does. If a woman is even putting a quilt on her head and does not submit, it's meaningless. It has got to do with meaning. It has got to do with meaning. I don't want to leave the subject. Obedience. Obedience, my friend, will always be rewarded, but every disobedience carries its own penalty. Will you remember that? Every disobedience carries its own penalty. We were looking at some of the people, you know, before I come uh, to the subject, and, and uh, hopefully I'll come very quickly. Before I come to the subject we are dealing with today, we looked at Moses, man of God, humble man. There was no man as meek as Moses. He was the meekest man in the world. Where did he slip? Where did he lost the battle? Anger. Oh, his strong point was humility. But my friend, I tell you, there can be a situation in your life, in my life, where I can lose the plot. Where a person can bring you to a point where you end up failure. And my failure make people suffer. He was out of the race. Out of the race because he obeyed partially. Listen to God. Went to the rock. He was told to speak the rock. Twice he hit the rock. And he also was angry with people called them rebellion. God said, you're out. I tell you, it was a tragedy for Moses. He is the one who suffered so much, did he not? He is the one who was in Egypt. He was the one who suffered with them a long time in the wilderness. Now he is looking for the reward. And if you read carefully, he pleaded with the Lord over and over again. And he said, Lord, please let me go. You know, the Lord had to speak to him and say to him, don't speak to me on this subject anymore. I think he listened. He listened and said, don't you speak to me about this subject anymore. You're not going there. And then we looked at Saul, or Joshua, we can say Joshua, obeyed partially. Partial obedience is very dangerous. Partial Christianity, a partial Christianity is also very very dangerous. It's like spittle. You say you're so blunt. Why the word of God is so blunt? Jesus says in the letter to Laodicean, he simply says to them, you're not hot, you're not cold. You're somewhere in between. You're give and take. And you are in league with the devil. Half-hearted, wishy-washy. What I will do? I'll spit you out of my mouth. That means you're worthless. That means you are totally worthless. I've got no value as far as I'm concerned. Though I have given my life for you. Though I valued you, but on this, on compromise, on partial obedience, on obeying partially, I'll spit you out of my mouth. So that's cruel. No, that's God's way. He is not with me, he is against me. That's why I give you all the examples in the, in the message we preached uh, last Sunday, that God is not happy with partial obedience. He is not happy with partial life. He is not happy with wishy-washy love. Love the Lord. That's what Jesus said. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Not, or oh, my love should not be compared with neighbor's love. It's your love. Love your neighbor as yourself. You can't love them. If, you, if I'm living in you, and then I become you, then you love like I love. But love the, your neighbor as yourself. But love me above everything. If anything comes between you and me, as far as love is concerned, you must be ready to kick it. Out. I'm not going to have any communion with you. Anything that hinders the love of God, a loving God as we ought to love. I tell you, my friend, I have got to make a decision. Be bold and say, no, you will not stand. You are going to fall. Everything, everything. We saw, Saul, of, Saul, of course, is 
Very obvious example. Very obvious example. Saul was men pleaser, pleasing men. I was compelled. I saw no other way. You gave me seven days, he says to Samuel, the prophet. Oh, but it was getting late. Was Samuel not timekeeper? No, I, I think he was a timekeeper. He was a timekeeper, but I tell you it was a test. Delay is a test. He was delayed and he took the matter into his own hand. And he became a partial obedient. Lost his kingdom. It's a dangerous thing. What I'm simply saying to ourselves is partial obedience equals to disobedience and then it equals to witchcraft. Because partial obedience becomes disobedience and then disobedience is like rebellion and rebellion is equal to witchcraft. Witchcraft and Christ cannot dwell together. You know that. It's very different. Witchcraft and... So, because of the sin of the world, disobedience of our parents, and I tell you it was the highest disobedience. I'm talking about our first parents. I'm talking about Adam and Eve. Their obedience was challenged. They disobeyed. It was the highest treason. You remember that? It was the highest treason, and for the highest treason, highest obedience was needed. You, you, you understand this? The requirement was the highest obedience, and Jesus was the only one who could do it. By sinning against God, by disobedience, the seed was corrupted. Man's seed was corrupted. That's why when God promised the Messiah, Christmas is coming, and I tell you, this is the message of Christmas too. This is the message of Christmas. There could be no savior. God will not compromise. His justice cannot be compromised. Yes, he is love. He is love. But he is judge as well. He is a just as well. If he has got only love, he can forgive everyone. Everyone will be accepted. Everyone will go into the kingdom of God. Oh, but he's a just God. His justice demands due punishment. His justice demands due punishment. He is so holy, he cannot see sin. He cannot see sin. When his own son, Lord Jesus Christ, as he obeyed, and he was on the cross, and he did not become a sinner by taking all the sin of the world on himself. What did he become? Sin. He became the personification of sin. And when he became sin, Father could not look at him. And the first time he cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthani. My God, he didn't say God. He didn't say God, God before. You can't see him, uh, hear him saying that. He always called him Father. But that relationship was gone. God cannot have relationship with sin. A lady came to me a long time ago. Not a young lady, an elderly woman. Not elderly as well, some 60 or 65. She was living a different lifestyle. You understand what I mean? I don't want to elaborate. It was not husband and wife relationship. It was a different lifestyle. And she, she poured her heart on me. I can't control it. I said, Jesus can. You cannot. He said, is that a sin? I said, it, it is a sin. It is a sin. It was punished as well. I said it was punished. In what? You remember the sons of Judah? You remember the sons of Judah? One of them was doing that. And I tell you, he was punished. It is not allowed. I'm not going to elaborate. Those who understand, understand. Those who don't understand, let it be so. 
This is our God. Highest sacrifice was needed. What was needed was a sinless man. Man has become sinner. The seed was corrupted. Seed, a sinless seed was needed. It could not be produced. What is God going to do? Oh, but I tell you, he had a plan. You can't surprise God. There was a lamb slain from what time? From the foundation of the world. It didn't surprise God. Was it his perfect will? I tell you, God was not planning for the, for the fall of man. Was he planning? No, he didn't plan. It was man's decision. Man took this decision. Woman took this decision. It was not God's idea. Oh, but my friend, God was not surprised. He came on the scene and he said, I'm going to send my own son. He will become a seed. That seed will be put in the womb of Mother Mary. That will be holy seed. That will be someone who was sinless. And that will do my will. God's people, none of us can do his will. That's a very hard statement and very powerful statement too. None of us, no man in the world can do his will. If you want to know the truth, you can read it in the word of God yourself. And it's in Isaiah 64 verse 6. No one can do it. It doesn't matter how religious that person is. It doesn't matter how devoted he is to his religion. It doesn't matter what religion he belongs. Without Christ, you cannot do the will of God. You cannot be accepted to him even. You cannot be accepted to him. To be accepted by God, you have got to have God. God living the life. That was the plan of God. That was relational. But we are all, how many? All mean all? Every religion? Every religious person? It doesn't matter how devoted he is? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. It is true. But we are all, I believe Isaiah is including himself. But we are all as an unclean thing. Talking about human race. We are all unclean. It is the sacrifice of Jesus, my friend. It is his death. It is letting him live. That matters. Everything else doesn't matter. It doesn't matter just religion. It can be just like that, you know. You get the bill, electric bill, and you don't pay it. I'm not going to pay it. Man will get the bill, and second bill, red bill comes, and he says to Frankie, listen, we're not going to pay this bill. We'll change the wiring. We will put new socket, new things, maybe golden one. Will it be forgiven? No, electricity is cut after the warning comes. In the same way, my friend, it's a very simple example, very crude one too. It doesn't matter how good is a man, he is nothing before God. Hey, yes, as far as dying for him, he has got value. God puts value on him. Jesus decides to take his place. Jesus decides to die as him, as him. He died as me. Have you heard about this? If not, I'm telling it very clearly. Jesus died as me. He took my place. That is a value good enough for me to rejoice. But we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness, our standing with God, are filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind take, wind have taken us away. There is no standing. There is no standing. It's Christ, my friend. He can only cause you to be obedient. He is the only one who did the will of God, and he is the only one who can accomplish the will of God in me, through me. Let's read the scripture before we close. Our time is going up. Going 
going away and we don't have much. But I'm simply saying to you, there is only one who obeyed God. There is only one who did the will of God. There was no other who could do the will of God. From Adam to all the people, they are counted sinners. Again and again, Thomas says in the Psalms, the Lord looked from heaven to see if there is any righteous. How many were righteous? He counted. Zero. <laughs> zero. But until Christ came, he was, there was zero righteous man. He looked, he over and over again, and even David says, I was conceived in the womb of my mother in sin. Man was from sinful seed, each and every one. We are born with sin nature. Let's read the scripture, please, before we go. Uh, let's read from Hebrew chapter 10, and then we will close. I'm simply saying it's an impossibility to live a righteous life without Christ. That is what I'm saying. I'm saying it over and over again. On what authority you say you're saying this? On the authority of the word of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All mean all. There is not a person who has not sinned. Everyone who is born of woman is sinful. Then a seed of God is put in the womb of a woman. Name was Miriam. Mary. That seed was that was promised in, the, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Woman seed. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you, the angel said to Mary, and that, wa that who will be born will be called the Son of the Living God. He's going to be called the Son of the Living God. Shall we read from verse 6, please? Chapter 10, Hebrew chapter 10, and verse 6. Very good. In burnt offering and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. They were all pointing towards him. And his name was Jesus. He was not only in the history. History is actually his story. When you say word history, that means it's his story. How do I say it is his story? He's not only a historical person, he is the maker of history. Did he say that? Yes. He said it to the Jewish people in chapter, chapter 5 of John's Gospel, and he said to them very clearly, he said, all history is my testimony. Because there's only history, there's only one history that can be trusted. That has not been touched by man's hand. And that history is biblical history. That history is actually from Genesis to Revelation. There is no other history we can trust. It's man's mind. We can accept it, we can reject it. In burnt offering, then said I, Jesus said before, let's read this please, verse 6. Let's read it. I'll just read it because you know it. He is the one who came. Christmas is coming. People are asking, why should God send his son? That's why there was no sinless person who could die for the sin of the world, who could take the sin of the world and remove them. In burnt offering and sacrifices, for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then, this is what Jesus is speaking. And then I, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. To do thy will of God. I said it earlier. There's only one who did the will of God. His name is Jesus. None other could do the will of God. Everyone failed. You pinpoint anyone and you name anyone. I'll tell you where they fell. There is not a single person in the, in the accurate history or the sacred history that could say, I have not sinned. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. What is the volume? From Genesis to Malachi. 
It was the volume of the book. It was speaking about him. Every sacrifice was speaking about him. It was like a gallery, you can say. It was like a gallery from Genesis to Revelation. And wherever you look, you'll see the painting of Jesus. Wherever you look, my friend, you will see him. Then said, I, I come. Okay, verse, verse 8. Praise God. This is about him. All of, it is all about him, my friend. It is all about him. When he came in this world, he was the house of the... Oh, nobody can say that. Let me say it then. When he came in this world, he was the house of his father. Now it's clear. I think the question was not very clear. He became the house of his father. Father was living in him. Everything he was saying was said by the father. And I tell you, my friend, we're going to speak about that one day. We are the house of God. We are the house of God. We are the building of God. God is building a building. We are all the living stones. And it's relational. Building has to do with relationship. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldst not. You didn't like. It was not your desire. You didn't ask. Neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. You remember when Solomon built the temple? And then God spoke to him very clearly. And he said, I don't live in the temple, the building built by men. I live in the building I make. I live in the building. And he says, I live in the hearts of people. You are the building of people people of God individually. And you are corporally, we are the building of God. We don't come to the church. May surprise some of you. But you are the church. In the office you work is your church. Building is not church. Maybe magnificent, but God doesn't look at that. He looks at the church. You are the church of God. You are the building of God. I go and prepare a place for you. Dwelling place. You're one of the dwelling places. We will come to that. I'm not going to touch it. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldst not, neither has the pleasure there, which are offered by the law. He is comparing the law and he said, did he... Did he accept the law? Yes. Did he live under the law? Yes. Did he fulfill the law? Yes. He fulfilled everything. He didn't come to cancel it, but to fulfill it, and he did fulfill it. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will. He is the, that's what I'm trying to say. He is the only one who can do the will of God. You try and you'll fail. There are powerful forces in your soul that will begin to fight. Against the will of God. Only he can do the will of God. And you have to surrender. And completely submit. And he begins to live. That is why we preach here. A different terminology. Living by the life of Christ. It is no more I. We give emphasis to these words. Many churches. They don't even hear about it. We live the life of Christ. Your life. Cannot be lived as he desires. Some tried. And even performed some miracles. They had to hear from the mouth of the Lord, I don't know you. They prophesied, they do miracles, did they not? Did great work, standing in the presence of the living God. We did this, we did this, we did this. No, it's not acceptable what you did. Only thing that is acceptable is what I have done. If we are the followers of Lord Jesus Christ, my friend... Then his model is very simple. Son can himself do nothing. Over and over again he said in the book of Gospel of John. I do what I see. I speak what I hear. Simple as that. Full stop. There is no other way. I tell you my friend, people use wonderful, wonderful things, wonderful things they have done. Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. 
He taketh away the first, taketh away. Some try to cling to the Old Testament and the law. This problem is mentioned in the book of Galatians. Law, bound, not set free. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away. Taketh away mean? Taketh away. You can read it in the letters very clearly. Yes, I love the Jewish people. I pray for them. They are chosen people of God, but if they do not accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they will be in hell. Is it clear? Though some men, I'm not going to mention the name, wrote in their book, Jesus is not the Messiah of Israel. That is a, that's a heresy. That is an abomination. That one sentence speaks against the word of God. And that man has to repent. Then said he, lo, I come to do the will of will, thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the, what is the second? Sacrifice of Jesus. That's the only one who can save. There's the only one who can live the life. Christian life is impossible. I say it again. Christian life is impossible. Only one person lived. His name is Jesus. And when he came on this world, he will dare not live his life. If he did not dare to live his life, will I venture? I'll say it again. If he dared not live his life, he lived the life of another, shall I venture, shall I try to live my life? I will be fool. I will be a fool. Do I follow him? Did he live his life himself? What did he do? He emptied himself. Of what? Of one form. It was the form of God. And he took the form of a man. Once he took the form of man, he decided, I'm not going to perform a single miracle by my own power. The enemy tried, did he not? The first thing the devil spoke to him was to perform a miracle. Oh, you're hungry. Stones. Talk to them. He knew him. He was the creator of him. He didn't create Satan, did he? No, he created Lucifer. But now he is Satan. But he understands the history. He knows the event. He knows who is this. He knows he is one with the Father. Many people have got quarrel with Trinity. What is Trinity? One spirit that proceeds from the Father. It is in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What it makes them? One. It's one spirit. It is one spirit manifest in three. One spirit. It cannot quarrel with each other because it's one spirit. And there are two spirits. By the, by the which will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for once for all you don't have to sacrifice over and over again Jesus there is no such thing as eating his literal body and sin that is foolishness again that some people have invented you understand what I mean it doesn't become the blood it doesn't become the body it's the symbol. You know what I'm talking about? Do you want me to mention? You understand? Verse 11. We're coming to the end. Time is up. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away. They can cover temporarily. Next year they have to do again. If they sin, they have to do it. It's not over and over again. The second. Once and for all, it's a done deal. It is finished, is the decision. Any church, any denomination says I have to sacrifice over and over again. It's a sheer foolishness. It is against the word of God. It is trying to minimize the sacrifice of Jesus. And I've got no praise for them. 
And every priest standeth daily ministering, of course, and he taketh away the sin. That's what we were trying to read. Verse 12, please. Verse 12. But this man, this man, this second man, second Adam, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, how for how long? One sacrifice forever sat down at the right hand of the right hand of his finished work. It's a done deal. Now what I'm going to do is no more I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. It's all settled. Praise God. Let's stand in the presence of the living God, God's people. That's a very simple thing. It's all about him. It's all about Christ. Many movements came and others were gone. There was a movement that were about healing movement. They lost Christ in the healing. All the thought was healing. Other movements have come and gone. Christ and his kingdom will only increase. I want someone to take residence in me. And if my friend were listening, is not resident in your heart. If he is not master and lord in your heart, it's a good opportunity to do it right now. It's a dangerous way of living. Religion is not acceptable. It doesn't matter how organized, how good it is. It is Christ and him alone. Even Paul says, when I came to you, I was determined that I will not know anything among you but Christ and him the crucified is the crucified my friend and to preach him one has to be crucified live his life he is so eager to live his life through you I'm a vessel I'm a temple I'm a privilege to be a vessel in a temple high hand lifted up to the Lord. Let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful. We have come with a heart with full of thanks to you. Thank you for completing the work of salvation. I receive it. I want to live your life I want you to be my model. I want to be a follower. That means what you do, what you have been doing, that's what I'm going to do. You did not live your life, but the life of Father living in you. You simply, Lord, became a house. I want to do the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.